So with the Dying Light 2 review earlier, we have had plenty of information about this game and today guys I bring you everything you need to know about Dying Light 2. How's it going guys, my name is DPJ and if you enjoyed the video leaving a like really helps out and if you like what you see and want to see more be sure to subscribe. So with tons of information about Dying Light 2, today I bring you an all in one video of everything we know so far, so let's get into it. So Dying Light 2 is officially titled Dying Light Stay Human. It has an official release date people, how long have we been waiting for this? So its official release date is December 7th 2021 and obviously it's available on all platforms. So the story told within Dying Light 2 occurs 20 years after the events of the first game. They have said you don't have to have played the first game to understand the second, as it is like I mentioned set 20 years later after the apocalypse where the world is lost to the virus. So the basics to the story are as follows. So the governments and world leaders have had to isolate the city of Haran and for that they have created an exclusion zone, leaving some people within the walls and for a while this worked in locking the virus away behind these walls. But it is said scientists still worked on this virus, trying to perfect it and sell it for military use, trying to make a quick buck. And while well, the virus got out, whether it was by accident or on purpose we do not know. Now the virus that got out is a mutated strain and it's much faster than the governments knew and it spread at a rate that couldn't be controlled. It said 98% of the population was infected and from this outbreak, over the many years it spread and caused collapse, only one city remained, Velador. And Villador is what we have left, it's a city surrounded by seemingly unpassable walls. Within these walls there are unique rules. And the people within here decided to use a radical new weapon against the infected, which is said to have actually given the people the upper hand within the early stages of this new pandemic. But it not long after created terrifying new archetype monsters. Now within this city is said a chemical attack was done to stop the spread of the original Haran virus. What this did to the city was make a tight ring of chemical active areas all around the place, where some of the chemicals got into the groundwater and spread under the surface meaning it killed every living life in terms of plants. The city floor now is basically dead of organic healthy life, so common people are only visitors here and life is moved up to the rooftops where life blooms. Now we are 15 years on, where a new equilibrium has emerged. Within daylight, human factions fight one another to control the city, while at night the streets become the realm of these bloodthirsty infected monsters. So we play the role of Aiden Coldwell, who is a member of Outcast travelling across the city known as Pilgrims. He is said to be looking for a person he lost many years ago, and that person is his only memory from the past and the only answer to who he is. And this is the main question to this game and we as the player decide on how Aiden evolves. Will we help the weak, make allies, enemies, join factions, three in total trying to control the streets? Will we use these factions full of complex characters, abuse your status to get what you need, become loyal to one or maybe even fall for someone? There are also those within the city who offer no alliance, bandits, outlaws and thugs who just live to plunder and kill. There is said to be many choices we as the player can make which affects the way in which we play the game. We have to choose our actions carefully as everything we do within the city can change the narrative and this system is said to be extremely complex and each choice reshapes the city, aligning with one faction unlocks benefits others don't and it means the story can be run multiple times and still feel fresh. Now at night, darkness changes everything, the alive hide, as at night hordes of the infected prey on the streets hoping to find someone left outside, the spawn of 15 years of mutation and evolution. If you are out at night, your only escape is that classic dying light parkour system. Get to the rooftops and exploit the city's verticality, but even there it is said you are not safe. But with Nightfall it doesn't just bring danger, it opens up the nests of the dead for you to explore and those brave enough to explore these nests can loot a jackpot. Now out in the street you can count on your parkour to save your life, but you do sometimes have to face the enemy head on. Here you have to be smart and resourceful. Techland have worked hard on the essence of combat within this game and you have multiple ways to hone your skills, whether that's on mobility and parkour aggressive blunt force combat or even with tools you have crafted to get that work done. 
so the map within Dying Light 2 is set within two massive regions and several zones. It's known as a multi-layered open world exploration. Because it isn't just about rooftops, every level of the city is explorable. They have also doubled the number of parkour moves over Dying Light 1, with over 3000 parkour moves here people within Dying Light 2. Dying Light 2 is also co-op with up to 4 players playing at the same time. And a couple of other details people before we get off, you can pre-order the game right now, I will link that down below, there's a collector's edition too, but they say stock is super limited and there's also a special edition to people. And that's what we have for today guys. If any more information drops on this game, which is bound to over the coming months, I will have you covered right here on my channel. So subscribe if you're new around here and want to see more Dying Light. But yes guys, that's what we know about today on Dying Light 2 and what came out of the recent reveal. And I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, it really helps out. If you're new around here and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. And if you never want to miss a video I upload, you can turn notifications on by hitting that bell button. But guys, thanks as always for stopping by. And hopefully I will see you on that next one.